Hi guys, thanks again for visiting us at RS Aquaculture. In this episode, we'll be showing you how to position some of your equipment that includes the sand filtration unit, the pump skid, uh, some of the UV filtration, how do you position your boxes among the foundation that was built earlier. So stay tuned. So in the previous episode, we actually show you how do you design your foundational layout plan uh, for your indoor crab farming system. We've actually also shown you uh, which parts to dig in terms of the retention tanks and why you need to dig them and why do you need to build water containment units to ensure that you do not lose a lot of water. And we've also shown you where to position some of your bricks. Uh, like bricks which will you be used for supporting your boxes so in this episode i will start off with how to position the rust equipment first so this is where we should end off by the end of this episode and i will be on the each indi individual component step by step all right so the first component that you should be looking at is how do you place your boxes as we already know that since we have actually built on this uh what we call the light bricks foundation for the boxes so the dimension can be found on the ebook that you have previously downloaded um so the first boxes which will be uh located over here is actually going to be placed like this so you can see that it consists of um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So it's a 10 boxes, um, 10 rows, right? And you have two, two, uh, two rows uh, back to back. So in total, you should be able to cock about um, 200 boxes over here. So let me just take the dimension from here, from one end to the extreme other end. So as you can see, that is actually about 3 meters uh, wide. Okay, so um, one important component that is the boxes that we are actually used to model this farm is actually from uh, Zhongke Hai. Uh, so the current boxes that we are actually using. So take note that if you are using for a different box system, you might have different dimensions. Alright, so back to back. Um, so this we usually call this block, uh, block A and block B and you correspondingly if you go down you have block C, block D, block E, block F, right? So accordingly. So this will be inclusive of the piping that is coming into the boxes note that in this case i've actually not drawn the outlet boxes right so the outlet water will tend to flow out so if you look at each individual boxes over here they have sort of a discharge hole in which they will be connected to the piping below so in the previous episode we have actually talked about the usage of this canal so this canal is actually meant to put the lowest piping uh, coming up from the lowest boxes here. So I'll just take a cross section so that you can see, see it a bit clearer. Okay, so taking a cross sectional view at this point, so um, will help to help us to have a better understanding of uh, the underlying of the boxes. So you can see that the water tends to come up from the drainage hole over here, okay? And it actually goes down to the piping below that it will be positioned below and exits throughout towards the drain. So the key is really the purpose of this canal is to make sure that you have adequate space for you to house your piping for the lowest point of the boxes. Okay, so let me just toggle back to the original view. Okay, so as you can see, water will tend to um, exit out from the drain over the side. So let me just re reorientate the view so they can see it a bit clearer. So this is where the water is actually accumulating from all the outlet from the boxes and actually going to the first retention tank. Alright, so that's for the first part of the boxes. So that's really key point to take note. Um, the important aspect is how do you position these boxes on the foundation that you have actually built in. So one really important component to consider is as well as the height of the boxes. So obviously we know that you know trying to put more boxes vertically will probably save you a bit more space but you also actually have to measure the effectiveness of the systems. For example, if I were to stand on the ground over here, right? And if I were to try to reach the highest box which is uh, over here, we can see that the distance is going to be quite high. It's going to be 2. Point at least 2 meters, 2.16 meters. You know, typical average heights of the, the people that are working on a farm is about 1.6, 1.65. So they'll probably need some sort of um, 
platform for them to stand on to do so. So for for us in our farm, actually, if you look closely at some of our configuration, we do not actually stack the boxes up to uh, up to uh, 10 rows. For example, we only stop at uh, the 7. So taking from here to here is about 1.7. So for the highest row, you still probably need a small platform for you to stand on to sort of um, retrieve the crab and feed. But anything from the the fourth to the ten row shouldn't be a problem, right? So this is one practical aspect, especially if you're designing your boxes in terms of height and how you are planning your layout and what sort of average height uh, you guys uh, have. Probably you guys have a taller staff or you have taller, taller employees or co-workers that could probably reach a high height. So this is actually a very important consideration when it comes to farm productivity, all right? Let me just close this up. So the next important part that we will want to be incorporating in the farm is where we should we place our pump skid. So the pump skid actually looks something like this. Okay. So um, for us, uh, we are actually, this is not the actual pump that we are using. I've just downloaded some uh, drawings of the internet. So obviously the first thing you're going to need when you're mounting a pump is to provide a sort of platform for it to rest on. So ideally, this platform should be a uh, stainless steel or at least a uh, GI uh, coated or is it uh, a well-painted mild steel to prevent rust and corrosion. Okay, so this uh, pump skid is actually supposed to be positioned in an area that's supposed to be dry. So we already know that water that is contained in this zone will not um, flow over to this area because of the dike that we have here the only possible water seepage you're going to get is from washing area which tend to come over here so it might be wise for some of you to sort of build up this uh, cement barricade to prevent the water from the washing area to seep over to the pump skid so that's one important consideration all right secondly you need to place the pump skid near to areas that have electrical access so for ours, all right, we actually have all of our electrical access point over somewhere over here in which we are not only connecting the pumps but also the UV filtration unit that requires power as well. So it's important to take note where you want to place your pump skid um, in respective of your electrical points and making sure that it's uh, dry. So our pump skid have actually been there for about five years. You can see the rust. That is actually uh, accumulated on the pump skid um, that is used to sort of hold the pumps uh, and bolted them together right so this is really really important so this is the first part of the rs equipment that you probably have to uh, sort of locate and sort of have to position first right so the second um equipment is really what we call the sand filters right so the sand filter unit right is um it's actually used to sort of filter out the majority of the solids. I would say 60 to 75 percent of the solids that are bigger in size. So this is not really the sand filter that we are using, but it's comparable in terms of the diameter, and the height is slightly bigger as well. So I just I just downloaded this uh, sand filtration unit of the net, um, and just scale it down to match some of the dimensions that we were looking at. Okay, so for the sand filtration unit, if you look at this drawing, it does not have what we call the multi port valve. So the multi port valve is actually somewhere over here, right? And you also have a handle for you to sort of mix up the valve when you sort of um, try to do back washes. So for us, the ideal location to place um, the sand filtration unit at our farm is actually over here, um, which is pretty ideal. Um, note that for all the sand filter, you probably have to do some sort of backwash, right, at, um, on your daily operation. So one important consideration is where is your flushing line going to go? So for us, our flushing line is actually uh, connected somewhere throughout here and it's being exited right throughout the building, okay? So we have a pipe that goes under out of this building and which we discharge some of the uh, sand filtration uh, solid that is being removed. Uh, for us, our sand filters are actually positioned right beside the pump skid. Okay, the third component you probably need is some sort of water storage. Okay, so as we all know that um, crabs are aquatic, so they probably have to sort of stay in um, in an aquatic or environment filled with water. So for us, what we do on our farm is we tend to have a water storage facility in which uh, we do store some not salt water but fresh water. Um, this is to ensure that we have adequate water supply when we do water top up. So we tend to top up water first using the water from the water tank. 
then we will top out salt to increase the salinity. So for some of you that have access to seawater, this can be used to directly uh, store some of the salt water that you are probably using. If you are drawing in seawater directly from the, the ocean, you probably have higher salinity. So remember to dilute the water before using them. So this is where we have actually placed our retention tank with respective to uh, the sand filtration and the pump skid. Right? And lastly, we do have what we call the UV filtration unit. Okay, so the UV filtration units uh, look something like this. For us, we have decided to place the UV over here because this will be the last sort of the last treatment before your, uh, your water actually flows back to the boxes. So it will be easier for us to just draw off the liquid here, pump into the UV and enable the, the liquid to sort of flow back to the boxes that connected over here. So this is actually quite similar of what we are doing at our farm. I would say our UV is actually placed more on this side, but I guess um, the UV dimension is not very, very big. So you are, you know, sort of easy to move it around and I don't see a problem of uh, you moving it around. Uh, some people actually also prefer to just place their UV tubes directly in the retention tank. That's doable as well, but you probably need electrical access. So I would say it's really important at this point to sort of position more of your electrical equipment over here. Right, then some of the, the filtration equipment or water storage and the wet parts of the equipment over here. So that's really crucial to ensure that you know you do not have water damaging everything else. All right, okay, so here you can see that I've actually replicated more boxes uh, towards the end, okay, and to ensure that all of the light boxes, the light bricks are actually covered with uh, boxes. I've actually included the piping that uh, came with the boxes, so this is what we all the inlet pipes. I have not drawn the outlet pipes yet. So that's all for this uh, today's episode. In the next episode, I will be actually going through some of the pipings that are actually being done on our RS systems, right? So this piping is really important to show you how individual components are connected to each other. And I'll try to explain a little bit more on how water is actually being flown in and flown out from the boxes and flowed back to the retention systems. All right. So um, for those who haven't downloaded the ebook yet, we do have an ebook with the detailed dimensioning of the equipments and the layout plan. So for those who have actually downloaded, you probably could um, you have already seen that we provided some of the dimensions with regards to the clearance, where the rust equipment, how do you position some of the sand filters, etc. So do have a look and try to understand you know why why certain things are actually positioned in a certain manner. And I'll see you again. Do remember to like and subscribe if you like our content. And I'll see you next week.